let's do a few examples of finding inverse Laplace transforms. And we'll start with some simple ones, and then uh, we'll step it up to some ones that need a little bit more effort with the algebra. So for example, let's say we want to find an inverse Laplace transform of something like 2 over s cubed. So this would be at the end of the problem when you're solving a, a differential equation. When you've solved for uh, the solution in the s domain, and you're working to come back to your solution in the t domain. So it's a handy thing to keep your uh, table of, of transforms nearby uh, just to, to compare to. So looking at that table, you should see that this one, the form that it most closely matches is, one that it matches exactly, by the way, um, is the Laplace transform of t to the n looks like n factorial over s to the n plus 1. Now, as we're going to notice on a lot of these, um, what's most significant is the form of this, and by that I mostly mean the s's, where the s's fall. So if the numerator were not exactly n factorial, that's okay. We can um, adjust constant multiples as needed, um, as we'll see in an example or two. Um, but the, the form of it is the most important part. So you look at this s to the n plus 1, and you notice that there, which tells you that n has to be 2. So what you're thinking is that this is going to look like t squared. And then just go back and verify. If you use t squared using this Laplace transform, you'd have 2 factorial, which is 2, divided by s to the third. So you're done. That's all there is to it. The answer is just t squared. As simple as that. But if, for instance, you had something like 1 over s cubed, you would again notice that it looks like the same structure. It still looks like this form over here. Um, so you'd still have t squared, but it's not just t squared because that would be off by a constant. So um, however you want to write this down is up to you, but you need to account for the possibility that we're going to um, need to fix that constant. So this answer is um, off by a factor of 2. In other words, if I just did t squared, I would have an answer that's 2 times this. So to adjust for that, I need to multiply by a half. So now if I do this, take the Laplace transform of this, you would have 1 half times 2 over s cubed, and it would simplify down to the correct piece. You can also think about this as, say, okay, I want to have 2 over s cubed, but um, to do that, I have to multiply by 2, and to keep things balanced, I should also multiply by a half, and do something like that, and then break out the 1 half, and do it like so, which gets you to the same place. Um, again, it's kind of up to you to find a way to, to keep track of this for yourself. Uh, but it's kind of reminiscent of when we did u sub uh, back in Calc 1, and you had to deal with constants like this. Um, if you're off by a factor of 2, for instance, you need to include a 1 half. And just, you know, be careful and think about it um, carefully, and it's not too hard to follow. Um, but that's one where you have to watch out for that. Um, say, for instance, we had something like the Laplace transform of 3 over s squared plus 16. So again, you would look through your table and see which transform has this form, or is the closest to this form. So you might notice, again, we're looking for kind of the, the form of the s's. We can't have any missing s's. If we have any missing constants, that's fine. We can deal with those. But um, the powers of s and so on need to be the same. So this looks like the Laplace transform of sine of bt, which is b over s squared plus b squared. Right, so looking at that, you recognize that s squared plus b squared looks like this, which tells you that b should be 4. Right, so we expect to have this be the sine of 4t. But if we just left it at that, it would be off because the Laplace transform of this would be 4 
over s squared plus 16, not 3. So our constant is off. Um, so just to, again, to show you how to write this one down, I'll do it like I did the last one, where we say, okay, what we want, we're going to break off this 3, and what we want is to have 4 over s squared plus 16. So the 3 just got pulled off on its own. And then when we inserted this 4 to keep things balanced, we should also insert a 1 fourth. So that this 1 fourth and 4 together are just 1. They don't change the value, just the way that it's written. So once we do that, then this part turns into sine of the four, four, or sine of 4t. And the 3 fourths gets carried along. So I can show one more step where we can pull out the 3 and the 1 fourth. And so the answer is 3 fourths sine of 4t. So the lesson of these examples is that uh, you should look for the structure that looks most like what you have. Specifically, you can't um, insert an s where there isn't one or remove an s where there is one. But if there's a constant multiple that you need to adjust, um, you can do so as we've done in these examples. Um, and, and the way that you keep track of it in your notes um, can vary if you find a different system that you prefer. But this is one way to, to write it down and to show your work to see how you got uh, the constant that wasn't there to begin with.